friends, my name is Heather. Welcome to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a Facebook makeover. So I'm going to be taking something that nobody wanted and flipping it into something to make it easier to sell or just pleasant to keep in the house. And oh my gosh, one of the best parts of this makeover, I'm going to show you a really awesome hack for the top. Um, it's kind of like has some veneer lifting up, but not quite enough to where I want to tackle and chisel it off. And I feel like that's a common problem. So um, I've got a really awesome solution for that, a budget friendly, and it looks fabulous. And I want to share it with you. So stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun with this makeover. Let's get started. The first thing I'd like to do with any makeover is take a look at the piece. So um, how dirty is it? Um, what kind of damage does it have? A lot of times there might be some damage around the feet of the piece. Um, we need to just take a look at all those things. We already know what's going on with the top. It doesn't look that dirty, so um, and it doesn't really have too much damage. Along the side, it has a little bit of stuff I'm going to have to smooth out, but overall, not too bad. We're keeping the original hardware, but freshening up the look, so I needed to remove it. Um, but looking at this date, it's from 1987, so I'm pretty sure that this has not been taken off the piece. Um, so we're pretty much looking at fossilized dust. <laughs> I'll go ahead and let these sit in a mixture of vinegar and a squirt of Dawn dish soap with hot water, and they should be fine. Like I said earlier, this isn't too dirty, so I'm just going to focus on getting all that stuff off the front and um, giving it a quick wipe down and we are good to go. Now this part is optional, um, but I like to take out the drawers and tape them around the edges uh, just to get a clean line and it really helps me out. Um, with painting it makes it a lot easier for me and I also really wanted to show you guys that you can tape off the inside holes here so paint doesn't drip through so that's that's really helpful so while we're doing our scuff sanding um, let's go ahead and address our first phase of the top um, like I said I'm not going to be stripping down any of this there are those few cracks on top of here what I want to do is just sand it down and make it as smooth as I possibly can um, without getting too much damage into the veneer and we're just going to leave it like that for now and then just go over the entire piece smooth out any other rough areas and we're all set for applying that color now I'm going in with some light pressure so whenever you're addressing any kind of sanding with damaged veneer or just your sanding veneer in general you always want to go lighter first and then kind of start you know working your way down um, to a heavier hand uh, be just because you're not sure how the grit of sandpaper is going to take to the veneer and in this case we don't want to damage it any more than it is we're just focused on smoothing it out we'll be using the Zinzer bullseye 123 primer in gray this is really good for darker pink colors, which is what we'll be using. Even if you don't want to apply a primer to your entire piece, I would still suggest doing it to the top with this veneer hack specifically. So for our project today, I'll be using this foam roller and applying the primer to the entire piece. Something to note with primer, it does apply the same way as paint, but it doesn't have the same working time. So once you lay it on there, you don't have as much time to kind of go back and smooth it out like you would with paint. So get it on there, smooth it out the best you can, and then just leave it alone. <laughs> we'll be spray painting our hardware, so I'm just going to be getting them prepped, and I'll take them outside and give them a few coats of gold. So what happened was I came in to check on the primer to see the coverage and then I really couldn't stand the look of these ridges, these teeth. This is the third piece that I'm doing in this set that has this at the top. So what I'm doing is filling it in. I'm taking a wood filler and a spatula and just filling it in. <laughs> so basically you just scoop a little bit at a time you press it in and then you smooth it out. So I'll just be doing that to the entire row and um, letting it dry for the day and we will meet back for paint. It is time for some paint. 
I'm using a roller to speed up the project. My preference is a brush, but I will say it doesn't really matter what one you use. It just depends on your personal preference. So I used to think that the brush wouldn't match with the roller if you kind of use them together. It looks different at first, yes. Normally with paints, they're self-leveling. So at the very end, everything will kind of smooth out. Let's see, I can go like right up to the corner and then I can come back with my roller and just kind of whoop, 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 whoop. Just kind of really get up in there and then smooth it down a little bit. You know, there's ways, there's ways of making it all look good. I am using a brush where the roller can't fit. So I wanted to show you how good this brush works around the edges. It really gets into all those details and underneath all that um, structure really nicely. Okay, so the first coat dried really good. I had an issue with a cracked drawer. So I'm gonna show you. Sometimes the, there will be um, a crack that will show up um, as you start painting that I, you know, you don't really see when you're sanding. So I just used some wood filler, um, a tiny bit and scraped it back and then sanded it and we're all set to go. If you like furniture makeovers with learning tips and techniques along the way, go ahead and subscribe. Okay. So here we are with our second coat. I'm not going to spend too much time on this since it's just the same as the first coat, but I wanted to note that I am not using any water with this paint. It's really creamy and it has a lot of good working time, so I don't need to worry about using any water with this one. Miss Athena coming to say hello. Okay friends, so we'll be sealing this piece today with some bare furniture wax and only the body. We're going to do something special for that top. I'll be using a lint-free rag to put the wax on. I like using the analogy that I once heard of you apply furniture wax like you would apply a lotion to your skin. So basically you just take some out and you rub it in. And I like to kind of smooth it out so it just looks a little even and you know it just rubs right into that surface and you're good to go. Let's put our hardware back on. So we're finally here. I'm going to show you that veneer hack. Let's go. So we are taking some decorative stick-on wallpaper and we are going to put it on the top. I like to flip the paper around when I'm getting my bearings for my measurements. So what I'll do is lay it on over, uh, like I'll match one side up to the, to the edge and then I'll lay the other side over and I'll get that crease like, like put into the wallpaper a little bit and then I'll redo my measurements. I, you know, so I don't go off of the crease, but I use it as a guide and then I cut into the wallpaper from there. Once you have it all measured and cut out, um, the next step is just laying it on. So I went ahead and gave it a little bit of a scuff sand um, just to give it um, that extra something to adhere to. So this is a peel and stick. So we're just going to uh, peel it back and stick it on. So how simple is that? You can pick out any uh, design that you'd like. So, um, and a lot of them come for, um, a lot of them are kitchen grade too so they already come like waterproof because they're for kitchen counters and backsplashes so you look them up and have fun and pick your own design and super easy and a really nice way to cover up that uh cover up that crunchy veneer <laughs> i love crunchy i think i'm gonna stick with crunchy once we get this peeled back it's gonna look really nice once the corners are exposed, I just make sure that they're even, smush them down to make sure that they're nice and stuck, and then go to the other side and pull that paper through. And afterwards, we just wanna make sure to smush out any air bubbles that may have gotten stuck up in there. To make this look more cohesive and like it's part of the piece, I go over the edges with a fine grit sandpaper, 
really lightly just passing through and it makes it blend in really nicely. To complete this look, I'm going to go around the trim in a darker pink color. It's a Black Locust by Bear, and I mixed it with some mineral powder um, just to keep it matte. This definitely looks good without it too, so I just wanted to show you guys some options. Decorative wallpaper can be used in a lot of different ways. So I have two other videos on my channel where I use decorative wallpaper in furniture makeovers. This one right here, I actually used to upcycle an old bookshelf. And this one over here, I used some decorative wallpaper to give some drawer fronts a little spice. So go ahead and click one of these two and I'll see you there. Bye friends.